welcome to the Nerd Party. Hi, this is Nick Anastasiu, story editor on Star Wars The Clone Wars and Star Wars Bad Batch. And you are listening to Aggressive Negotiations. It's the official beginning of the holiday season here on Aggressive Negotiations as we celebrate with yet another of the annual tradition. Thanks, Gungan. I am Jedi Master John Mills. I am thrilled to be sitting at table with my dear friend, Jedi Master Matthew Rushing. Matt, happy thanks, Gungan, to you. It's the holiday season. No. And whoop de no, doo. No. No, a dickery no, no, dock. I'm, I'm and done. don't forget no. to put a lightsaber no, no. in your sock, cause Okay. That I'll go with. <laughs> that I'll go with. But just that oh. whole the, the whoop de doo thing. Like it's too early still. You gotta, you gotta wait another week, okay? You gotta wait for the whoop de doo. Wait for the whoop de doo, but don't wait to go on over to Apple Podcasts and give us a star rating and review. And don't wait to go over to the nerdparty.com slash contact and reach out to us. We get your emails. We love to read them. We love to also get your suggestions for things you'd love to hear us talking about. And speaking of which, you can go over to Twitter and look for the handle at the Jedi Masters. That's us. You can look for the network at Join Nerd Party or the Nerd Party on Facebook and Instagram. I never go on Facebook, so I have no idea whether anybody engages with us over there. So don't take it personally if I don't. All that preamble aside, of course, first and foremost, thankful that we're still here doing the show and people like it enough to keep listening. So very thankful for that. That's we're, we're, we're happy and proud to have spent as many years as we have talking in the Star Wars universe and about the Star Wars universe. So let, let's open it right there, Matt. Thankful that we're doing the show and people seem seem to still like it. Yeah, I mean, I I was just thinking about this. You know, we've done, we've got 273 episodes in our feed. Like, that's yeah. crazy. And, it's a lot. Yeah, and I, I do. I appreciate that there are people that interact with us and want to talk with us, you know, that, that, that hit us up on Twitter. And, you know, that is something to be thankful for, uh, that we can still have great conversations about this franchise that we love. And even with some of the contention that happens, that we can navigate all that and still find a way to celebrate and have a good time. And I mean, isn't that really what these fandoms are meant to be about? Yes, indeed. And this is, this is, I could potentially get in trouble here at the, at the thanks Gungan table, but I'm going to say something so incredibly insane that seems so absurdly Pollyanna ish and looking at things with rose-colored glasses that people are going to question whether it's actually me saying these words or whether somebody has a uh, blaster to the back of my skull forcing me to say these things. But I promise you, this is this, trying to look at it from a more positive angle than, than gets reported out there. Everybody, of course, knows about Patty Jenkins' Star Wars movie he has fallen apart. It seems that there are indicators that both Ryan Johnson and Taika Waititi's films are not moving forward for whatever reason. Everybody wants to blame someone. Everybody wants to yell about it. Everybody wants to get angry. And there was a brief moment where I realized I'm thankful for it. And everybody's going to say, oh, you're going to come down. Nope, nope, nope. Not coming down on any director. In fact, I love a lot of Taika Waititi's work. Uh, Ryan Johnson directed Brick, which I absolutely love. It's a good director. He works with a tremendous director of photography. All of his films are beautiful. I think Patty Jenkins is a gifted director. But what I'm thankful for, the weird thing, is that even though it might be excessive from a certain point of view, obviously there's somebody putting a lot of care into the next moves for big screen Star Wars. And while it might come across as extraordinarily messy, I'm thankful that there are people who do care. And if all they want to wind up giving me is the stuff on Disney Plus, like Book of Boba Fett, which we're waiting for, or Ahsoka, or Mando Season 3, these different shows that are coming out, 
in all honesty, I'm perfectly happy. Spend your time putting the quality in that. Take your time with the movies. I'm not in a rush to get back to the theaters on a regular basis, and I don't mm-hmm. want to burn out on them like I did with Marvel. So yeah. strangely enough, I'm thankful for what a lot of people are portraying as tumult behind the scenes. Yeah, that's an, it's a great way to look at it, and I think it, it's smart in the sense that, you know, we I don't necessarily think we want films to just be rushed out. You know, I think that one of the things that makes Star Wars special is the fact that there were not things coming out every year. Uh, you know, Star Wars films came out three at a time, right? You know, and in the sense that every three years you would get a Star Wars film when they were in production, you know. Um, and it wasn't something where, you know, we were just trying to make content to make content. It was about storytelling. And so if your desire is to get great films that fit within the Star Wars mythos, I think the best way to do that is to make sure that you're finding stories to which need to be told on the big screen. And to take your time to do that, I'm completely okay with, you know, especially since, you know, it, it, the last trilogy wrapped up there in uh, 2019. So, I mean, uh, it's not real, like it's been forever. Right. That That is such a weird thing. The two years seems like such a long time, mm-hmm. and it's because we're all used to the Marvel model. And meanwhile, as 2021 rolls out, let's, you know, let's bring it back to the streaming stuff. We're going to get tons of content in 2022. Right. Yeah, I'm thankful for that. I'm really looking mm-hmm. forward to having an excuse to sit down once a week and just say, all right, you know what? This is this is Daddy's Star Wars time, right. y'all. I get the TV. Leave me alone. Well, and, and, and speaking of that, I think, you know, one of the things I think we're probably both thankful for is that we finally got uh, the Bad Batch uh, that came out oh, this yes. season. And, you yep. know, it turned out to be, I think, a really – Good show, a great continuation of a lot of the storytelling that we were getting in The Clone Wars and really doing a very good job of helping us to understand and and see what those first few months and, of course, you know, as we move forward, those years of being under the thumb of the Empire were like. And there's so many great questions that we can answer in this show as we move forward. And so... I'm really loving the characters. I'm loving the mystery with uh, Omega. And I, I, I'm I, legitimately excited for the next season. I can't wait till we get season two of The Bad Batch. I completely agree. Uh, Bad Batch exceeded even my high expectations because I knew what was going on to be covered in it and I already had high expectations and to exceed them is something special and so I am thankful for the show I'm also extremely thankful that uh Wrecker is in the show like I I adore Wrecker he is undoubtedly my favorite of the batch um and I love his relationship with Omega and this doesn't take anything away from the other characters. I love all of the things that they've done with the characters. But Wrecker is that character that really captures the youthful exuberance I still remember about when I wrote Star Wars stories in my head uh, as a kid. And so very thankful for that. Yes, Bad Batch is definitely a reason to be thankful uh, in, in the Star Wars galaxy. I'm thankful that I'm soon going to get to read uh, Zahn's final question mark Thrawn book because I love the character. I love what he's done with the series, and I can't wait to see where he goes with it. Uh, so I'm very thankful that here I'm very close to actually reading the, the final of the Thrawn trilogy, which we, we've heaped praise over on 602 Club. Like, who would have imagined a Star Wars series where if you – you know, copy and replace a couple of words. It's just, it's, it has no lightsabers. It has no, it, it's everything that people have been saying they want to see Star Wars do. And it's like, 
you just sort of like it, it's that thing of like Will that gif of like Will Smith that everybody uses of him right. gesturing over to the side where people say, "Oh, I want Star Wars without lightsabers," and you're just like you're just gesturing over here at Bad Batch and uh, and thr- and the Thrawn books. And it's like there, it's here. Yep, you'd better be happy. It's funny that you you went to that next because I was thinking to myself, you know, we got two great stories uh, from Zon this year, and you know, we had. Greater good, and then of course, lesser evil just got uh, introduced and and released to everyone. And the fact that we got two Thrawn books in one year is phenomenal. And it's it's fascinating and interesting that you know we could possibly maybe not see this character again from Zahn's perspective in in the sense of him writing it because. Who knows what they're going to do with him in, in live action, you know? And there's not a lot of room oh. for him to be played with in, in the time period he's been in. So, you know, I, I'm just so excited to see what's going to happen next. But, I mean, in all honesty, you know, having read both of them, I mean, to me, personally, it's some of the best Star Wars written material that we have gotten in years and i think the the ascendancy trilogy is one of the best things that has been written for star wars um ever it's 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 Agreed. really really good so no i'm glad that you brought that up uh because i i think um you know zon deserves all the praise for that and it, very cool that it, we got both of them in one year kind of crazy I, yeah. I mean that that's that's a super productive year for a writer to to turn that. It's out. amazing. That's and yeah, and it's, it's and crazy. I think that the final book in the series might be the longest Star Wars book that we've ever gotten because it's over five hundred pages. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Looking forward to digging in to that one. Uh, it's, my copy's on the way, I'm sure. So. What are you thankful for? I here I am. I'm I'm sort of hogging the table here. Well, you know, what what are you thankful for in the Star Wars galaxy? You know, what was really exciting this year was that they finally filmed the Kenobi series and yes. gave us a little tease of it finally and that it's actually going to be coming out in 2023. So, I think I'm I'm just excited that it it actually exists. And it's actually right. happening, you know. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm also thankful that apparently the uh, people at, you know, Disney and Lucasfilm have been listening to aggressive negotiations. And uh, my esteemed colleague and Jedi Master John Mills about story ideas because, well, it looks like Obi Wan Kenobi and Anakin are going to face off one more time. So apparently they listen to our show, which I'm also thankful for. I've I've oh <laughs> yeah hi Lucasfilm how you doing uh you know what listen if they if they if this goes down the road that that I've been begging for for years man I I won't even ask for a story credit that's how grateful I'll be that's how grateful I'll be um because that is uh absolutely that would be it's the best of all possible options honestly um you know what and I'm gonna I'm gonna do a really weird detour here that I'm really thankful for I mean it's not really a detour all of the love that Hayden Christensen is experiencing with the announcement that he's going to be a part of that series and the fact that they are giving those of us who have always loved the prequels an opportunity to just smile and nod and say welcome home everybody yeah You'll get to see Hayden Christensen the way that we've always held him in our hearts while some of you might have been out there wrecking him in the comments and stuff like that. So I'm I'm really grateful because knowing how vicious this fan base was with Hayden Christensen, the fact that I'm seeing so much love for him, to to borrow a line from Yoda, it brings warm feelings to my heart. I, I like that you mentioned that because I think that is really neat. Um, and I, I think one of the things that I'm also thankful for, and, and I was reminded of this, you know, the other day, I, I think I saw uh, Tracy Kenobio tweet this, and, and I'm just thankful that the prequels are getting the love that they always deserved these yep. days, that people have come around to the fact that the prequels are great 
and the storytelling that uh, prospects in them were phenomenal and that we can keep mining them because they are so rich and so deep that, you know, you could spend, you know, a whole generation, two generations, three generations of people mining this storyline. Uh, and it's ever present in the sense of its thematic element, that it is still just as timely as it ever was. And so I love that the the PT uh, just gets more and more popular, it seems like, every year. Yes, I'm I'm extremely grateful for that because you know that my favorite is is Revenge of the Sith. So yep. anything anything that uh, brings a little bit more shine on that love, I'm all for it, all for it. Another thing that I'm thankful for, as odd as it may sound, the fact that they released those short series with very little fanfare, biomes, and the, I forget what the sound one was called. Mm-hmm. They're not yep. terrific. They're not something I'm going to write home about, but there was no fanfare. They were just there one day. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. And they don't overstay their welcome. There's a couple of minutes and just sort of enjoy and go through and say, yeah, yeah, these are some pretty interesting planets that they went to. That's kind of cool. And so I appreciate that. I think that's, I, I like the fact that they're dropping content that not everything is this big, massive attention seeking spotlight. You need to talk about it on social media for a week sort of thing. It's just, you turn on Disney plus and it's like, oh, well, that's interesting. What is that about? And you go there and you explore. And that's, you know, the, the, it's almost like the the old, uh, uh, you know, special features on the the home releases where it was like it encourages you to go and get a little more familiar with the thing that you love. And so, yeah, I appreciate those things for that reason. I'm also excited about the fact that we can end the year legitimately with Star Wars content, brand new yep. Star Wars content coming in the form of the Book of Boba Fett, which uh, I I want to thank them for creating a teaser trailer for that, to which didn't give anything away. It just made it mm-hmm. look interesting, and then it ended. And I, I don't want big surprises or anything ruined in that series. I want it... Uh, f- for me to be able to watch it every week and just be surprised as to what happens. And I can't wait to see it. You know, um, I'm, I'm really excited to see how they continue that character and what what they're going to do with him and how it's going to tie into the rest of everything they've been doing with The Mandalorian and plans moving forward with the other shows and how it might connect to them. So, I mean, th- all of that is is, I think, something to which... You know, obviously, when they started The Mandalorian, I did expect it to be kind of become its own Filoni Favreau verse, you know, almost. Right. Uh, but I love that that's how we get to end the year, Star Wars fans. So awesome. I'm thankful that they made me want to see a Boba Fett series. Mm hmm. You know, I've had a long, complicated relationship with the character in the first place. And I was never a guy that wanted Boba Fett to come back. I was always like, hey, he's dead. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. And then they brought him back, and I, well, well, okay. Well, I'm thankful that they found a way to make it so that even the the hardcore skeptic uh, who really resisted that that popular cultural urge for Boba Fett, I'm on board. I'm really interested to see what they're going to do with this it, yep. it looks super interesting and so you know i'm i'm definitely definitely thankful for that i'm also thankful for visions trying something new bringing in a different genre and going back to a you know a a, a cultural storytelling tradition mm-hmm. that influenced lucas and then bringing it back to the modern inheritors of that tradition who work in animation and saying, okay, let's reflect it back on you. You interpret it. And I thought that was a really interesting experiment. I wasn't nuts about every episode, but uh, it was definitely something that was worthwhile to see. Yeah, I I mean, 
I think there were a few of them that, you know, had really stood out to me that I really enjoyed. And for that, I'm grateful. And like you said, I think what it does do is it gives you the opportunity to um, try something new, you know. And as, you know, we, we, as we had talked about them, you know, uh, on, on the show, uh, I think that they're a good homage to Star Wars by people who truly love Star Wars and they're just trying to have fun and basically say thank you for them, which I think is awesome. Mm -hmm. So, Something else that I'm thankful for here on Thanks Gungan is the fact that the quality of the toys that they're releasing is getting even better. I hold in my hand right here a gift from a dear friend a uh, uh yes you have your Qui-Gon bobblehead i have my Bo-Katan nice. black series that it's was a so gift great. from somebody and the fact that i can pull that helmet off and it's Katie Sackhoff i'm like wow that's crazy yep. and i know it seems silly to be that way but i don't buy many pieces mhm and so the fact that they've made this and that they made a Cad Bane a real Cad Bane that I can truly love and have on my shelf and who is so cool looking that even the six-year-old sees it and is like, can I play with that? I was like, yeah, sure, go ahead. That's fine. That's fine. You can play with him and Ahsoka and Bo-Katan. Just don't lose the helmet, please. Right. Um, You know, so it's, uh, you know, it seems silly, but I really think that they've, they've, kind of taking things to a new level with the Mm -hmm. toys that they're releasing now no i agree with you i mean not only are uh the uh, like especially the six it's uh black series figures phenomenal but i mean they have incredible work that they've done lego just continues to kill it you know um i i love the Mm -hmm. lego sets and i wish i had more space for all of them i i still my dream (laughs) is to have that massive $800 Millennium Falcon one day. Um, I'll get it. It's just going it, to, it's going to be a while, but. Buy it pre-assembled, best of all possible worlds. <laughs> no, that's not the fun part uh, is, but, um, you know, I, I just, uh, it. you're absolutely right. I mean, I think they've crafted some really fun things for fans to be able to collect um, and, you know, hopefully distribution will get better and easier. Um, but you know what? I, this is going to sound really odd, but I'm thankful for COVID because I was able to get exclusives from conventions much easier than if I went to the convention because I was able to just purchase them online. And so, say, like, I was able okay. to get... See? Like, uh, I was able to get like a Soka, um, the, the ornament that would have, I would have had to, you know, be in line for who knows how long trying to wait in it. Like that, there was just something magical about being able to get those kind of things without having to wait for six hours. I think this is the perfect moment to close our thanks Gungan celebration specifically because that right there makes me thankful for the most important thing that I thought. I was putting on the thickest pair of rose-colored glasses possible at the beginning of this episode, and boy, howdy, you just you came out of the out of out of the backfield on fire, and you just scored a touchdown. So I am thankful for that <laughs> right there, that because that is the most positive spin I've ever seen anybody put on the last twenty months. Good lord! Um, and of course, everybody, everybody. Keep in mind, we're we're having a lot of fun here. It's the holiday season. Go for it. Go ahead. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. And whoop de doo. Thank you. And we're just we're trying to have a laugh. This is the time of year where we should all be sitting back and relaxing and letting go of the that that stuff. Letting go of it as best we can. Life's tough. The world can get weird. And Just on a final note, as usual, this is the mushy note. I am deeply thankful for my dear friend on the other side of this screen, the other microphone here, who has made it such a joy to continue podcasting for all of these years. I I was reflecting on how long I've been podcasting and specifically how long I've been podcasting with you, Matt, and it's so bizarre that 
this venture of ours continues, we're friends outside of it, obviously, but the fact that we have an excuse separated by thousands of miles, I'm thankful that I can still at least once a week, you know, uh, chew, chew the hut, as it were. Yeah. No, I, I, I couldn't have said it better. I mean, in all honesty, you know, I, I think for everyone, it, it's been an incredibly difficult few years. And one of the joys in this has been the fact that we have still been able to get together and talk about things that we've loved together, whether here on Aggressive Negotiations or elsewhere. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it has helped you know me and I, I know you and and hopefully we've we've helped everybody find a little bit of sanity in a sea of chaos and you know um it's it's a joy you know um to to have that and it's a joy that you know there has been um you know an anakin to my obi-wan for so many years you know it's 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 uh -oh. that it's yeah well i don't know how that ends for you in the oh end, boy but, um, but hey, no, you know, I outlive the, you. I'm just going to point that out. I outlive true. you. I, 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 well, do you, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of, we're both in the same place in the end. Right. So, um, kick that's it back. true. But I, you could make an argument that I have a little bit more fun along the way. Just going to say that. <laughs> just going to say that. Okay. You know, killing younglings. Okay. Anyway, but, um, oh, okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> outside of that, outside of that, <laughs> but in all honesty, I mean, yes, I, this is, and I think, you know, one of the things that we've always tried to do here on Aggressive Negotiations is show the way that fandom can be a blessing instead of a curse. It can bring people together and it can help us through hard times. It can be fun. And, and that's what we want to continue to do here on this show. Uh, and so, you know, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for joining us for so many years. And, and um, you know, we hope to continue. So, you know, if you like us, you know, you know please find us and, and subscribe and, you know, follow us on Twitter and tell other people about the show. Because, again, we want to be the light of the Jedi in a Sith world. And so... You know, um, if that's something that you're a champion of, then, you know, help champion us too. So, uh, but John, if, if people do, you know, kind of want to have the opportunity to catch up with you here and see what else you've got going on, or just maybe they just want to say hi, you know, because it's the holiday season. They're like, you know, I've been meaning to reach out to that guy named John, uh, on that show about Star Wars and I want to do it over the holiday season. whoop dee doo well, you can find me as Kessel Junkie on uh, the social networks. Uh, you know what? Let's connect over on Letterboxd because I like to write uh, little pithy reviews of things that uh, I watch, including the Marvel movies, because we're doing a series over on the 602 Club feed on TFM. Matt and I are where we're talking about Marvel, which is it's a fairly popular franchise out there. So we're going back through on Assembling Avengers. It's a lot of fun to listen to. Trust me. Back here on the Nerd Party, I'm co-hosting House Lights, which looks at the works of directors from, it, it, I know, every week. You're tired of hearing it. But we look at the works of directors, and it's a lot of fun. And I'm especially looking forward to uh, continuing the exploration of Miyazaki, uh, but then also returning to two of my most beloved films of the 1990s uh, from Alex Proyas uh, very soon. So that's where you can find me. Matt, where can people find you? Well, uh, of course, here on the Nerd Party Network, I did a show with Drea Kaufman called Outpost, uh, and that's a Harry Potter show. We talked about every single chapter of the Harry Potter series, one chapter at a time. We're actually finished with that now, so it's completed, and you can enjoy whenever you get a chance. You can find me all over social media under the name Matt Rushing 2 so whether they're you know, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, all those places, you can find me there. And like John mentioned over on the TFM Network, We've got the 602 Club, which is we're talking about all of the fandoms we love. We've also got bonus shows in that feed as well, like Snyder Cuts or Assembling Avengers. So please check all of that out. Uh, also doing the Orb, Literary Tracks, and Warp 5. The Orb is about Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Literary Tracks is about the books and the comics of Star Trek. And then 
Warp 5 is about Star Trek Enterprise. But you know what? Thank you so much for joining us here. We really appreciate you hanging out with us here on Aggressive Negotiations. John, it's time to decorate the temple for Life Day. So I don't know. I think it's time we close these negotiations and, uh, you know, you know, maybe maybe uh, put up the uh, mistletoe. Wow, do they have mistletoe in Star Wars? I That's have to go research question. that. I have to go research that in the Jedi Temple archives. Uh, so, Master Rushing, I agree. It's time to close these negotiations. Mm-hmm.